Hey everyone, welcome to the July edition of the Prisma Chronicle. We've got something a little bit different for you this month. We've got a chronicle dedicated to the page builder, all of its features, including some of the ones that we've released over the last 12 months. This video will be timestamped with all the different features that we're using. So if you want to find something specifically, you'll see it on the timeline below and you can jump ahead to the part that you're looking for. All right, so let's jump into it. So here I am in my empty repo and I'm going to create a new page. So the page that I'm going to create today is going to be the Prismic homepage. So that is a page type. Voila, here I am um, within the page builder. So you see already, I have a few different buttons here, a few different calls to action. The first one is around adding a slice to the page. So if I click on this button here, it's going to launch the slice selector modal. And this shows me all the slices that exist for this page type that the developer has created for me and my marketing team. The second thing you notice at the top of the page as well is that we have this SEO and social tab. You see this is for your SEO meta title and meta description and you see it even gives you a little preview of what that's going to look like as well and I can also add the social image too. You also notice at the top of the page that there's the option to add tags as well. But I'm going to do one thing before I add the hero to my page. So in the kebab menu here, there's the option for the live preview settings. Now, what this does is it allows you to add a URL of the website um, that you're building followed by the slice simulator. And what this will do is it will provide you with a live preview of your slices as you're building. So it will show you what they're looking like in real time and any edits or changes that you make will appear there. So for me, it's prismic.io slash slice simulator. So I'm gonna save. And now I'm going to add the hero slice to my page. Jump down here. So the one I'm looking for is the hero homepage. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start adding the content to my page. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the heading for my page. So the headless page builder for next Nuxt and Svelkit sites. And actually what I wanna do is I wanna apply a little bit of styling to this. So this is a rich text field. If I wanna access the rich text options, highlight the text there you see it shows me that i can keep it as a paragraph i can make a bulleted list i can bold and italicize um, so i'm going to make this part bold and then what i have here on this page is i have some link variants and basically i can use these as the buttons or the calls to action on my website so i want to have two calls to action i want to have one that uh, is a link to get started to create a repo and another one which is to see a demo of how the page builder works. So you see I have a list of different options here. I have the link to a web page, link to a Prismic page or link to media. In this case, I wanna do a link to a web page, but what I could also do is I could create a link to a Prismic page. So if I click on that option, it launches a modal and it shows you all the pages that are available in the repo. Now that I see that it's empty, but I will show you that later on what it looks like when uh, there are more pages in the repo. Cool, so close that, come back here. So again, as I mentioned, it's gonna be a link to a web page. Um, the URL is going to be to the Prismic dashboard. That's where you create your repo, slash dashboard. Can add a new tab. And it's gonna be get started. And then the second one is gonna be a link to video demo. So in this case, it's gonna be a link to a media, um, to a video that I've uploaded to our media library. So I'm gonna launch the media library here. Now, I've already uploaded a bunch of assets that I wanna use for building my web pages. In this case, I know that the media is gonna be a video, so I'm gonna put the, the video filter on there, and I've already tagged it as homepage. So it's my hero video here, so I'm gonna add that to the homepage. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image for my homepage. So my nice hero image. Again, I've tagged it as the homepage. So it should be easy able to find it. And there it is. Image, homepage. And we are good to go. Cool. So I've added my image there. And there's also a link on this image field. So if people click on that, it's going to take them through to our demo. So I'm just going to add the title for that now and then i'm going to add the link so it says try editing a page with prismic and again 
I have my options of my different links. In this case, again, it's going to be a web page, and this one is going to be .io slash try tab. And there we have it. So if I look at the slice here on the left, and I look at the Prismic web page, you see that it looks exactly the same in the page builder. So I have a very good idea of what it is that I'm going to be pushing live on my website. So I'm going to save my page now. You see here also that the title of the page has been taken from the heading of the page. So in this case, I want to make sure that I have a nice title for my team. I'm going to call it the home page. And that's important because when I go to search for the page, it's going to be indexing on that title. Um, so having good titles, good things like that is going to be helpful for navigating and finding different pages in the repo. All right, so as you can see, I've fast forwarded through and I've added all the rest of the slices to my repo. But what I wanna do is I wanna quickly show you another really powerful feature that we have, which is the slice, copy and paste. So basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to take a slice um, from within your repo. You can command C or you can use the slice menu to copy it and then you can paste it into another page in your repo or even within the same page now the caveat to that is that that type of slice must exist um, within that page type or within that custom type to be able to copy and paste so in this case i have two call to actions on the page i have one for slice machine so that was that page i showed you earlier in the content relationship modal which is basically talking about our local developer tool so i want to have a call to action for that one so people can go on there and visit that and find out a little bit more about slice machine and then i want to have a second one for the page builder so instead of creating the page builder one from scratch what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy and paste the DevTools one, that means I have the structure, it means I have copy already, and then I can just quickly make the edits, um, and it's gonna save me a lot of time than creating from scratch. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna come down to my bottom of my page, and I'm going to paste it in above there. So I paste that in now, and basically I'm going to quickly update the copy for the page builder. So I'm going to update that content relationship to page builder. And there we have it. So really quickly copying and pasting saved me a whole bunch of time. Um, again, it gives me a really good sense of what the slice is going to look like as well um, without having to start from a blank canvas. Cool. Uh, now we're very close to being able to publish this page, but there's a couple more things to do before we can publish this page. So firstly, I want to add a tag to the page. So in this case, this is gonna be managed by the marketing team. I'm just gonna create this new tag and it's gonna be added to the page. I'm just gonna save that there and make sure it's updated. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have an SEO and social tab where you can add your meta title, meta description, social image. Now you can see mine's empty. Now I'm gonna go ahead and publish the page. Now, obviously I've left that SEO and social tag blank. And on this repo, I have the SEO metadata assistant enabled. So it's de detected that these fields are empty and based on the context of the page and the content within the page, it's generated some suggestions for me. So you can see here, it's generated a suggestion for the meta title. It's got a little character limit here and it's showing me the optimal length for the SEO meta title. Um, and also the same thing for the meta description. Now I have two options here. I could discard and publish without. Obviously, I don't wanna do that. I wanna have them. I could also edit them within the field if I want, but I think these ones are pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and publish. So now I've published that page on my website. There's a couple of other features that I want to show you. The first one is our AI translation feature. So firstly, you see here, there's the option to copy to another locale. Now, if I'm just doing a normal copy to a locale, I can select to copy all the content. I select the target language. Um, I would select French, for example, and I could copy all the content. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna create an exact copy of that page in my French locale. So I can show that to you now. And basically what that means is if you have a multi-language website, um, you can have a version of it in French. And obviously you imagine that you want that page to be in French. So you could have someone come through and translate the content here. But obviously within Prismic, we have the ability to translate it right away. So if I select the translate with AI, select French, 
And you'll see here, there's a couple of other features that come with the translate um, with AI as well. So one is a glossary. So for example, I have a bunch of branded terms that I've used. I don't want them to be translated. Um, so what I'm gonna say is my source, uh, I want Prismic to remain Prismic and my target Prismic as well. I'm gonna add that to my glossary. Um, also things like slice machine, don't want that to be translated into French as machine à tranche or something like that. So I'm gonna keep that as slice machine as well. And then also for page builder, that is a branded term. It's one for Prismic and I'm gonna keep that as well. Now you see here, I'm setting the rule from our master locale, which is the English European Union, and I'm setting it to French, but I could also set that for all the languages in the repo as well. So say it's gonna be the same for Dutch or German or Spanish. I do that and I add it to the glossary. And that means now when I go through and start translating into Spanish or German or Dutch, that that will be there as well. And so I can close that. Um, also, I have additional instructions so I could say things around my tone of voice or things like that. So um, for example, say I want to keep a professional tone of voice and use formal French. So that means that we'll use uh, vous instead of tu. And if I translate the content, it's going to do now is going to translate and copy all of that to French. Now jumping back to the English version of my page. So one of the other really powerful features that we have with Prismic is the releases feature. So what that allows you to do is it allows you to make edits to your page that will be released at a certain time or even group bunches of pages together. So for example, if you're working towards a big holiday release, maybe a summer sale or something like that, that you can group all of those pages together as part of a release and then have them all be released at the same time on that specific day. So take the 1st of August, for example, if that's when your sale is starting. Now, in the case of Prismic, um, say for example here, I have this feature slice, which has a bunch of features for the page builder. Now, say for example, that AI, um, that translation with AI feature that I just showed you, we wanna add that to the slice, but we wanna, um, we want it to go live at a specific time and date in the future when we know that the feature will be ready. What I could do is I could add um, that feature there. So I could say, translate, I could add my image. Gonna add my information regarding the feature. So I could say AI yeah, yeah, translation. Let's say seamlessly translate with AI. I could save. So that will now be there on the page. And then what I want to do is I want to publish it to a release. So I'm going to create a new release. This is my AI translate release. And I want that to be scheduled. So I want it to be go live on the first. And I want it to go live at midnight. So all good to go. And now you see in the version panel, I have this release version. So that's the version with my change with AI translate. So if I go back to my published version, you see that it remains the same. And then if I wanna make any other changes to this release version, say this maybe some other features are going live on the 1st of August, I could do that as well. And then obviously if actually the feature is launched ahead of schedule, I can just jump in here and I could publish it right away. And that will become the new published version of the page. And you see that we have this plan tab in the page list. This is where all of your releases are. Um, if I look for my AI translate release, click on it there. I see it's my homepage, see that it's the 1st of August. I could preview, I could delete, and I could publish as well. Now, a couple other things we wanna show you before wrapping up today. Obviously, the first one is the search. So as we mentioned, um, the main thing that it's indexing on is the page name. It also indexes based on the UID. Um, so for example, in the case of my homepage, if I search home, well, it's gonna show me a little highlight based on the name of the page. Say for example, if I have a UID in here, 
set the UID as new Prismac. So I've saved that there. Come back and I search. You see the little highlight indicating that the search is matching based on the UID. There's a bunch of other things that you can use to help refine your search. So you could use the type of page, the tag. So remember I added that marketing tag. So obviously I could use that to refine my search. You can also look at the status. So if the page is in draft, if it's published release, or if it's previously been archived and also the authors of the page. It's only me for the moment, um, but again, it's helpful if you're working in a repo with lots of your colleagues and you just wanna look for stuff that you've done, you could apply that filter for yourself and it will just give you all of your pages. Now, one of the last features that we launched in the last year was the spaces feature. What that allows you to do is it allows you to better organize and group your content, making it easier for teams to collaborate and work together. So for example, in the case of Prismic, if I wanted to create a space, I'd go through and do it there. I'd create one for our blog team and I could select all the custom types related to the blog. Now on top of the spaces feature, we do have custom roles that allows you to set access rights based on a specific space. So for example, you could make all of the blog team publishers just on the blog space and then on the marketing space they could just be writers or have read-only access now that is a feature only available for enterprise customers if you want to get access or know more there's a link below to get in touch with our sales team one other item that we have coming this quarter is real-time collaboration in the page builder so some of you may have already noticed the status indicator appearing at the top of the page and this is the first of many new features that we'll be bringing. So not only will you see the status indicator at the top of the page, but you'll also start to see it at the field level. So you can see where your colleagues are working on a page and also the autosave. So you won't have to save any of your updates. They'll simply be automatically saved for you as you're working on the page. And coming up after that, we'll also be adding commenting, notifications, and much more. So keep an eye out for that in Q3 this year. So that's everything for this demo of the page builder. If you have any questions on any of the features that we've demoed today, please feel free to leave a comment in the chat. One of the team will get back to you. And obviously if you think this video is gonna be useful for you and your team, please feel free to save it or share it around as well. So we'll see you again next month with my colleague Chrono, who will do the same thing with Slice Machine. So a total run through a comprehensive demo of all of the features there. So we'll see you again next month.